Hi guys, this is Dofan Hikia and you're welcome back to Marriage Dipped in Blood. This is Marriage Questions with Dr. Andrew and Lucy Abba. So I've been making these videos for the past one year. Yes, exactly one year in June. And wow. yes, it's been amazing. I will do recorded videos on different subjects and post them on my Facebook page and YouTube. And it's been a blessing to so many people. So yes. at the beginning uh, of this month, God laid it on my heart to invite my mentors, my role models to just share with us on different subjects and just let us hear their stories. And hmm. it's been amazing. We're well, excited to crown the month with you. <laughs> oh, Thank you. <laughs> you remind me so much of my parents and I feel so blessed that you... Thank you. Thank you. You're too. They're such an no, encouragement. I see your, your parents. Thank <laughs> God. <laughs> you encourage and support us, and it's such a blessing. Dr. Andrew mm. Abba and his lovely wife, um, Mommy Lucy, have been married for 43 amazing years. Yes, mm. and they're still so, so in love. When you watch them, you just want to get married if you're not married. And if you're married, uh. you just... <laughs> You just be praying and doing your best to, you know, get to where they are. <laughs> and mm. the Bible says that we should be followers of those who through faith and patience have inherited the promise. So as a wise child of God, or as wise children of God, Ogem and I have decided to follow you closely. And Thank you. Today Thank we are you. sharing you with our friends. <laughs> Thank God. Thank God. You're welcome. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So today our subject of discussion is how to maximize every phase of marriage. The different stages. You know, we have been told that if we can pass the seven seven year mark without breaking up, then if you have built a foundation or something, you can keep going. But I've seen some people mm. that in two years it's all over. In five years, they can't take it anymore, you know. Mm. But we want to know what has kept you this long. What did you do through all those phases? I know that you had, like, some stages in your life that were difficult, some were fine, some were not so good. And we were yeah. raising children in different areas. I just want you to share with us how you passed through these different stages in your life and mm. still... After four decades, you are still so in love. So over to you. First, you start. This starts. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, the journey, as I've uh, often shared with you, for us was not. Um, we didn't start knowing God the way we know God now. We started the journey as good churchgoers. So we knew it was good to be married, to have a traditional marriage, then do a, do a church wedding. Yeah. And uh, uh, that was it. We tried to uh, follow the tenets of the church. Yeah. And then um, uh, at that time, uh, we were just using our head knowledge, actually. Uh, educated people that we should be, and you know, uh, we should enjoy each other, we should uh, have fun. In fact, we were a nuisance to some people. <laughs> I remember when we were in Katsinala, um, the, the college had a staff club, yeah. And uh, each time I went to the club with my husband, the people felt very angry and they scolded him, Why are you bringing your wife here? <laughs> And he said, but this is a staff club for families, yes. you know. So um, those days were quite difficult. And he was able to withstand his friends. Yeah. Uh, I know many people that just by that question, they would decide not to take their wives out anymore. Uh, but we, we stuck to eat. In church, even sometimes we were challenged that we shouldn't sit together in church that uh, women should sit on one side and men should sit on the other side. Wow. 
well. So uh, we, we, we refused that. <laughs> If they ask me to go to the women's section, then Andrew will say, well, I'm going to sit there. Yes. <laughs> so that's how it was. <laughs> then Christ came in. And uh, when Christ came in, we knew now that foundationally. For me, I, 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 I must say that before Christ, I thought that, well, anytime this marriage is not going well, I'm going to end it. <laughs> but when Christ came in, I knew that, you know, those vows that we made, for better, for worse, in sickness and in health, yeah. they were very serious about And there was no going back to it. And so whatever challenge we had, that informed, you know, my decision, trying to work to resolve if we had any disagreement and all that. So that, that's what has been keeping me. Um, when I started having children, I nearly derailed. My whole focus was on child raising. I, I didn't have time even for myself. Uh, if I went out shopping, I didn't even see clothes for myself. But I saw clothes for children. I saw uh, uh, toys for children. I saw books for children. And it came to a point that I had to tell myself, what's happening to me? If I wanted to... I, I didn't have any decent thing to wear, but my children had boxes and boxes of clothes. Yeah. So I, I had to begin to start balancing things up. Yeah. So for wow. me, that, that, that's how the journey was. Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, period. Wow. Then I so also having children. Their children are very manipulative. Yes. Um, it's like they want to know. Uh, who is the boss in the house? Exactly. So the children, um, they may ask me for something, and if I said no, they waited until maybe like uh, uh, my one of my daughters, especially if, if she had the, the father's car coming, she would rush outside and go and ask the father this very same thing she asked me, yeah. and then. Unfortunately for her, he would say, but where's your mother? <laughs> he would say, he would say, she's inside. He said, why are you asking me this now? Your mother was in at home with you. Why didn't you ask her? Then she would just cast her head down. Just... I have my standards. I have my principles. And I know where I'm coming from, that I'm coming from Christ. So um, I don't have to take advice or input or guidance from anybody else unless I recognize in them, that is husband and wife, that they share the same spirit, understanding, and background as I have, yeah. then I can covet something um, from their lives. Yeah. And I resist very much counsel or input or influence from any other party, no matter who. Um, oftentimes you hear at weddings, a pastor says, well, come to me if, uh, with due respect, my own third party in my marriage is Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ, not any pastor whatsoever, because everyone has his own monkey to carry. Yeah. So you don't see me taking anything that is happening or not happening between my wife and I to anybody outside, unless it's a good thing an experience that is worth sharing with another party that will bless them. And I don't raise my voice. I don't have to raise my voice on my wife. Rarely. Let me say rarely. Maybe once in three years. Um, offhand suddenly and I know what to do about it right away. Yeah. There is nothing we don't talk about as I said, well almost nothing yeah. but it is in our beds sometimes when nobody else is awake and we're awake that we thrash it out in any case I can share it here for younger people. The chemistry of my wife's body is such that if there is hot to thrash out and we don't talk about it and sort it out, her body just won't respond. <laughs> So uh, it's like at that time, I don't have a wife until 
you know, we talk about it and sort it out, then our chemistry will flow normally. So those are some of the tips uh, that I will give younger people. And that your wife is your companion, your friend, your sister, even before she's a wife. Uh, that, that's it, more than anybody else. I remember when we were courting yet, my father came on a visit to Zaria then and said, does she know your salary? And I burst out laughing because we saw how close we were already, not even married. Yeah. And I was fearing for the, if these ones get married, we'd be either so close already as a boyfriend, girlfriend. Yeah. So he asked, does she know your salary? I laughed and he took offense. I laughed because I was an assistant lecturer in the ABU ATC system. Yes. And she as a student knew what an assistant salary, uh, I mean, lecturer salary was. She needs you know, everybody knew. Yes. Then I told my father, Papa, this is the girl, I, you can take her like she's my wife. Yeah. And I'm gonna everything, do everything with her. She will lie on the same bed, you know? Yes. If her life is in her hands, so to speak. Yes. If she wanted, she could take a nap and throw my tongue when I take sleep. Yes. So why would I? I had a Nothing to hide. Salary. Okay, that is the um, a little episode to show the way that I relate to her. She's my friend and my companion, my confidant, and my wife. And that's how each of these young people should take their wives. Wow, this is so beautiful. And all up until forty-three years. So, mommy, what do you have to say to us, ladies, in this? time this generation um, where a lot of us can be so impatient you know and we seem to take things too seriously what what do we do how can we enjoy and have fun like you're having fun and enjoying your marriage even after over 40 years i was saying that even though um you have mentors that will bring you to a meeting place the two of you must resolve to solve issues. Because no matter what an outsider says, if you come back to the same uh, situation you were in, it won't help. Yes. So I think we only use our mentors to help us start a conversation when we have a blockage. Yeah. And that, that, that's how it should be. Okay, great. So it's not like you, you don't need <laughs> uh, I, I more adventurous I am sure. More adventurous. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, oh, I, yes, sir. Yes. I, I want to add something about salary. Okay. It is it's even unwise for your partner not to know your salary. Speak to the network. Like have you been on this road before? Road before? Like, Thank you, Nani Mix. Okay. It is, it's even unwise for your partner not to know your salary anyway. Yes. Because that creates room for conflict. Exactly. If your partner knows your salary, her expectations are tailored. Who's the most adventurous? <laughs> More adventurous, I am sure. More adventurous. <laughs> Adventure. Let, let, let me tell you his maxim. Okay. Adventure need not be successful. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. You can fail. In the end, if you fail in the adventure, it doesn't matter. You would have gained something for good. Even if yes. it's uh, new in the end, you've added experience that yes. will inform other situations of your life. Yes. So I'm more adventurous. Yes. Uh, you know, some staff are going to book and he decides that Oh, there's a road through Wurukum, through uh, Anede. Let's try that road. And I'm like, have you been on this road before? Road before. Said, Adventure need not be successful. If we go and there's a blockage, we turn back. <laughs> and that is why... That and I don't why, like that. That is why also, if anything <laughs> comes up, a question, a decision, I don't joke with my wife's uh, input. Because uh, it's not a matter of two working together only. Uh, it has worked with evidence. Anything she uh, objects to in our lives, say a business 
deal or like I got a pastor once when I was in Beno Cement to do business with. He looked at this pastor a few times and warned me that she wasn't really sure that I could go on with. And I said, no, no, you started. This is a pastor. At the end of the day, the pastor duped me. That's one example. So, and there are several others. I have no time to tell. Uh, so, adventure or no adventure, when she pinches me and says, hey, Andrew, I listen because invariably, if we are not agreed, it just doesn't work. Oh, wow. Oh, can you just give a digital clap for mommy? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Her instincts, you know, normally they say women have this intuition, yes. And yes. So to the young ladies, don't play with it. That's why we have to be really spiritual. We have to let our walk with God, our relationship with God, yeah. strengthen, yeah. continue to grow, or else what you are thinking yeah. will not be in line with what God is saying. But it's because she's true. highly spiritual and she's in tune with God. That's why mm. her in instincts and her intuition will always come out right. Okay. Yes. I actually think God loves women more than men. <laughs> you listen to us. I <laughs> come, to think of, come to think of it, when the Bible says, help meet, yes. help suitable for you, yes. we are missing a whole lot yes. when we don't realize that God has given us this lifetime friend yes. and path next to your skin to help you yes. in all kinds of ways. Exactly. A lot of people will lose out on it when we forget that this is a helper, yes. this is a consultant. This is a confident, yes. an advisor. And we ought to take full advantage of that. Otherwise, it's to our detriment. Oh, this is so nice. We are so valuable and most of us don't even realize it. So, we are consultants. Ladies, did you hear? Yes. yes. Okay. Use your power well. Okay. <laughs> so, the next question is um, who takes a longer time to get ready? Oh, gee, this one. <laughs> I do you know something? <laughs> Even for this program, was I, I did a little quarrel because five minutes to the time she was still whatever in the bedroom and I kept, you know, raising trouble here. And, and, you know, every church service, the first confession I make to clear the airways spiritually is anger for my wife not getting ready in time. <laughs> Although I wake her up one hour or more to the time Wow. She, she will keep me one thing on the other until we get there late. <laughs> then I have to quarrel all the way to the church. I have to repent. You know? <laughs> Every Sunday, not one. <laughs> oh my God, this is fun. Okay. So, another question. So, in raising children, who is more strict? The last time mm -hmm. we heard that, usually there is a sleeper and there is a spanker. I don't know. Who's the one who talks and who spanks? Who's strict? Um, I'm I'm not so much of a spanker, but I think I'm more than my husband. He is a mother hen. <laughs> <laughs> He's a mother hen, but um, oh uh, he hardly I, I really can I, he hardly spanks the children. It didn't. Okay, <laughs> okay that's it. So will get so angry and uh, you know just sit and talk and pray. Go to his bedroom, talk to God about the child. <laughs> but um, I've not known him as the spanker. Okay. I I I scream, I scream okay. and I talk and I quarrel. <laughs> but um, I don't like spanking so much because I myself I didn't like being spanked. As a child, I didn't enjoy it. And my father had this habit of, oh, you see what you have done. Go and, go and cut a cane and oh, bring. <laughs> and that thing used to uh, make me feel so sad. Sometimes I would just go and get, you know this, um, what is it called, zinnia flour? Yes. Do you know zinnia flour? It's, it's a, it's a, it's Very thin. Zinnia flowers. Okay. We had a lot of them. So if you ask me to cut a stick, I would just go and uproot the zinnia flour and bring it to you. <laughs> I would be like, oh, you don't like me, you see, you must behave well. Yes. So 
I, I actually think spanking a child or spank uh, beating an adult is the highest insult you can give. Okay. I think that anyone who is rational should be spoken to. Uh, if we talk of uh, spanking, maybe like even a husband beating a wife, no. I, I, I feel you've taken the intellect of your wife. Yeah. We take a cane to speak to her. Mm -mm. You ought to speak to your wife and she will reason. Yeah. There's no wife that loves her husband who will go out of her way to displease him. Yeah. So I don't know. Uh, I'm, talk I'm talking of both children and adults because the, the spanking business, even a, a child, children have that dignity, you know. Yeah. When you beat children, you see them losing face, especially if it's in front of other, other children. True. That's why even as, uh, as a teacher, I hate the idea of spanking children at assembly. Yeah. You take you know, them the separate face. Just you and the child. W what you're trying to save is lost because if you don't take time, the child will just take it that well. I'm known for being stubborn, so why can't I go ahead and be stubborn? <laughs> and uh, education theories tell us that too. Um, I really think that when the Bible is saying that we should not spare the rod and spoil the child, the rod of correction is not necessarily to be used for hitting somebody. You can use the rod. Look, I have told a child, turn your back. You're disturbing the class. Turn your back and face the wall. And they cry more than when you take a cane and spank them. Because you're, you don't want to be part of us. So you just turn your back and face the wall. Okay. By the time they do that for 15, 10 minutes, most children take correction. And they take cue that, you know, you don't, you don't just go disturbing other children. Okay. Or send the child to the room. It's still the rod of correction. Okay. Go to your room. Your behavior is not social. So you have to stay in your room. Social distance. You, or you have a corner. You have a corner. <laughs> you have a sad corner. And in that sad corner, you can, you can, you can even keep books in the sad corner. For reasons, why, so many reasons why I should, I should be happy. Yes. So if the child is reading, if they go to the sad corner and they're there by themselves, they, they're bound to pick the book and they will read the book and um, they will entertain themselves. I want to add, I want to add something. that children have, we ought to um, exploit or benefit from, right from early age. My three-year-old plus grandchild, uh, he would misbehave and I, and I would start shouting and the poor child would be so confused and be looking at me as if this is no more granddad. What's going on? And I found it didn't help to be shouting at him. So it was better to have held him there and try to speak at the level. Children are more knowledgeable than we think. Even from the womb, we can communicate already, not to talk about when they can see you face to face. Like my, my third child, uh, she, Noel, right from the court, she was so sensitive that if you sneeze, she would just shiver. And I noticed that that sensitivity remains with her till now. Yes. So a child like that, from the beginning to now, you didn't need to spank at all. Yeah. You knew that she was so sensitive, she loved you so much that if you spoke to her heart, she took it, you have spanked her already. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I asked one question and look at how wide that went. One hour is not enough for us. <laughs> so let me just ask. The, the voice is going again. I'll ask one last question. One last question. One okay. Last thing, yes, from both of you. So, mommy, could you please tell us what are daddy's strengths that you really admire? The strength of yeah. my mind. Mm. What is the strength? One or two? That um, I really admire. And you see that. I admire his, um, uh, the support he gives me. Um, I, he has allowed me to develop myself for myself, first of all. Whatever I have wanted to do, he has 
gave me the leeway. Um, he has not uh, come up to say, no, you, you don't need to go here. You don't need to go there. Or this training is enough for you. Why, why are you? Like, I'm forever training. You know, this shutdown, I, I was telling you, I was learning how to do online school. Yes. I, I, I learned my online. Yes. And there are so many other things I'm, I'm, I'm learning online. I, I don't know much about the internet, but it has really helped me. It's like, I feel you can take a degree online. <laughs> of yes. course, you can take that a degree helps. online. Um, I, I, I write from my room without contact with anyone. And right now I feel I don't even need a certificate. So <laughs> I, I, I can tap knowledge from wherever yes. um, I get it online. Okay. Wow. So he's very, very supportive. Uh, of my ideas, he has never put me down. Oh, that's so, so about that, I know many women my age who have been limited in whatever they wanted to do. Sometimes it's like the man will say, "I'm, I'm doing this, so you can't also be doing that." I, I have to finish before you do. I didn't have to take turns with my husband to do whatever I wanted to do. Yeah. Um, I, I went to the UK alone. We were preparing to go to the US, he for his PhD and I for my first degree when he lost his father. And so he said, I didn't feel like leaving Nigeria anymore. And I, I, I quickly applied to the UK and I, I, I went by myself. I know that many of his friends felt so bad. How can you leave your wife? It's like going to the UK means I was going to get, get, not come back or get married to somebody else or something. Wow. So I really like the way um, he supports, supports me and supports the family. That's he has a... never spared anything for us. Whatever he has, he, he gives it to us. Oh. And uh, it's also uh, one little thing I wanted to say to ladies about this. Um, in our society, when you are married, maybe to a firstborn of a family, or even if it's not a firstborn, that is the person who is any more than anyone in the family. It means that you have to put your acts together to accommodate all the people that your husband is, uh, is responsible for. It is you who have to remind your husband that, look, I, I think mama needs clothes. I think she needs this food. And sometimes from the family savings, you can send that kind of food to the mother or the father or the, whoever you are supporting. Yeah. I know we can't take on everybody, but that is something that we, have, we, we wives have to take care of. Um, when my parents were alive, I, I, I preferred my husband giving them whatever we had to give by hand than even he sending me to give them. And then I dealt, I related with my mother-in-law openly too. If I was buying food for myself, I knew I would buy for, for her and all that. So I think it's a good thing that uh, ladies should know. Wow. Okay. That's a great idea. Good. Okay. So that, thank you so much, mommy. This is so touching. Then, I start crying. Let's go to that. Sorry. Uh, I, I, I didn't get. I said that now we are going to you. I want you to tell us what strengths mommy has that you really admire? The same question I asked her. Yes, okay, good. Um, she's she's a, a strong lady. And um, I appreciate that a lot. And let me tell you a joke about that. I've told her, you're so strong a lady that if God didn't give me to you a strong man, you wouldn't have succeeded in marriage. You needed a person like me to be able to handle you. <laughs> um, that's the joke. But in reality, we've had experiences in life that um, sad experiences, but uh, that made me, uh, gave me comfort out of this specific. When a colleague, Christian brother, was shot dead in Benue Cement, you know him. Yes. I was detained because. Um, we were probing, he was my secretary, our chairman, we were probing a manager in the system, and the detail is too much, but um, we were detained on account of his uh, 
being killed by armed robbers. And the way my wife conducted herself gave me comfort, consoled me, because she would stand up to any man, right up to the managing director and raise questions firmly, as our people will say, not like a woman, mm -hmm. and several other situations like that. And I told myself, yes, if I drop dead today, this woman will stand and be sure that everything is done right. Yeah. More importantly, she will stand and make sure that our children are brought up the way that she and I dreamt they would be brought up and she won't be a walkover to anybody. Wow. So that is one thing I, that I appreciate. And she doesn't meddle with women easily yeah. in the sense that she has very few women friends. Her makeup just cannot accommodate the trifles and you know, frivolities of several, including brethren women, if you like, you know? Well, yeah, gossiping and yeah. bringing stories to their homes and so on. So we found that my wife has more male friends mm -hmm. and she's more confident they come and she's there in our midst and we're all trying you know, to trash it out in debate in the sitting room oh. uh, and so on. And uh, the third one is that she makes do with what there is or what there isn't. She doesn't have large expectations that are beyond my coping. As you said earlier, when we have or we don't have, we're still friends, yeah. we still communicate, everything is open. And she knows how to handle a man. Mm -hmm. Not particularly romantic, let me say that. But um, I remember when I lost my job in Benue Cement, for example, she made sure I didn't lose my image as the man of the house. Three years sitting down doing nothing but writing and reading. My wife would quietly go and put money in my pocket on the shirt she, she knows I'm going to use so that my manhood would not shrink, you know? <laughs> Equally so the way that she, oh. she would direct the children, go for that and ask. Yeah. And so those are the, some of the, some, not all, some of the elements that uh, I see as, as her strength. Wow. You know? This has been so beautiful. We can just go on and on and on and take and take from your wealth of wisdom. But we'll just um, come to a close today. So yeah. I'm so grateful. Once again, thank you for honoring my invitation. Oh, you're thank welcome. You thank you very much. So much. Thank you. It's a privilege. Yes, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. you. And thank oh, God who gave you this inspiration to write that book, yes, Marriage sir. Dipped in Blood, and fill it up with all these programs. Thank you. Thank sir. you. Amen. And you guys, if you want to hear more about their story, get ready to buy my book. All right. Yeah, okay. Yes. All yes. right. We will. Yes. We will. <laughs> A part of their story <laughs> is in my book. And I'm done. It's heading over to the publishers soon. And then when it's out, get ready to buy it and read and read yeah, and read. All right. Yes, sir. Love oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. please say happy birthday again to Daddy happy Andrew. Happy birthday to you. Thank you thank very you. much. God bless you. Thank you. Happy birthday, Daddy thank you. Andrew. But I am glad to be here listening to you and Mommy. Many more years in yeah. peace. Strength Thank and you. prosperity. That's Someone said All this right. was fun. Happy birthday. Oh, thank you. That's All right. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, this doesn't have to thank end. You. Love you. Doesn't have to I love you. To go. My love you again. <laughs> My love again. Yeah, and husband. best. Thank you. Yes. Bye. Oh, Bye. I love yes, you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah, awesome. Have a beautiful yeah. weekend. Thank you so much, guys. I see Idu. Yes. Bye. You. Idu Bye. Here. Thank you guys for following this far. Um, we had a great time. Yes. People who have gone ahead of us. And if you don't have any couple that have gone ahead of you like this in your corner, please find one. We need a beautiful picture to continue to look up to, you know, and things can only keep getting better and better for us all. If you have struggles in your relationship, if you have struggles in your marriage, um, there is hope for you. There is hope for you. So just stay with me in the next few months. 
in a few weeks, we are having something interesting again coming your way. Thank you again, Mrs. Shimru Moon. I see you all. Pardon me if I didn't see your name and mention your name. But thank you for staying with Zofan and Marriage Deep in Blood. And so we have come to the end of Marriage Questions in May. Thank you for watching and God bless you. Bye.